Okay, hello everyone and welcome to our channel. So today we continue with our big data related manuals and we'll talk about one of the central components of the whole ecosystem. So we'll talk about uh, Hadoop distributed file system or just shortened HDFS. Yeah, so that's a virtual file system where actually uh, almost all big data related tools uh, saves data or loads data from. All right. Uh, so today we'll mostly focus on practice. Uh, so if you want to know more uh, theory related details then welcome to our blog available at blog.dataguru.guide uh, on the upcoming uh, couple of days there should be a new post related to HDFS and there we'll discuss in uh, quite details what HDFS is, how it operates and so on. Yeah, but today we'll focus on practice, uh, so how we work with HDFS. Right, so today we'll show how that works both for Cloudera and Hortonworks. Uh, let's start with Cloudera. So as a reminder, uh, in the last videos we showed how to install Cloudera and Hortonworks VM, how we set up them, configure and just look around. Uh, and after that we just uh, saved uh, the state of the virtual machine, so we don't need to wait for a couple of minutes or even tens of minutes while everything is up and running. Yeah, so it should be much, much faster now. Okay, and before we start, let's just log in in Cloudera Manager to confirm that all related services are up and running. Let's see. Okay, so for most of them we have uh, health state unknown. Okay, now it's bad. Okay, that's fine. Uh, still, uh, we need to wait for a couple of minutes while they are running. And the reason is when we save the state, so all data which is in uh, RAM, it is dumped uh, onto a onto the hard disk and now uh, VirtualBox needs some time before this uh, RAM related data is back into the uh, uh, into the RAM right so we need some 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 minutes for that but anyway it should be much faster than we just turn off our virtual machine and then wait for all other services to be up once again. Yeah. So let's wait for a couple of minutes. Okay, HDFS. So we'll talk today about HDFS. Okay. And yeah, so while we are waiting, let's discuss a bit about HDFS. So some uh, theory. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, in order to HDFS to work, Hadoop distributed file system, uh, at least two type of servers or services should be running. It's name node and data node. Yeah. So, what is it about? So, name node uh, actually that's a dedicated service which uh, stores all metadata or data about data stored on this uh, file system. So as HDFS is a distributed file system, uh, that means that each file is cut uh, into multiple pieces and each piece of this file is stored uh, separately on different uh, servers if we talk about real cluster and moreover each of this piece is also replicated so it means that each piece of file is also replicated and it is determined by a parameter called replication factor uh, so it could be so uh, obviously it's an integer from one till 
until whatever. Uh, so in practice, a replication factor is usually two or three. Yeah. So we uh, we shouldn't set it um, to be very big because it means that we will need a lot of space yeah, being wasted on these replicas. Okay, so name node stores this data. So when a user tries to read uh, some data from HDFS, so uh, that's when name node uh, comes onto the stage. Uh, so he retrieves from his uh, meta store where these particular pieces of this file are stored and forwards client to the data nodes to one or multiple data nodes where these actual pieces of uh, data are stored right so that's uh, very briefly about theory okay let's see what we have here okay so almost everything is running except for HDFS, what we actually need, right? Okay. Availability active, health bed. Okay. Okay, but most probably still it should work. Hope so. Um, Okay, just uh, let's try. Uh, so first of all, if we talk about uh, Cloudera, then we should mention that for working uh, with HDFS, we have uh, basically two options. All right, so the first one is related, of course, to console. Yeah, so we can work with HDFS uh, from the console, uh, just uh, executing commands. Yeah, so that's the first option and the second one is related to hue yeah so we can work with uh, hdfs from a graphical user interface right okay uh, so in, uh, in general hdfs commands are quite similar to linux commands and so to use HDFS related commands. We have uh, two available syntaxes. So the first one is Hadoop FS, which stands for file system, and then we execute some commands. Yeah, so let's execute it without any options, and so we can see the usage. Yeah, so basically here we can see all available commands for HDFS. Uh, so most of them are quite similar to Linux, like cat change mode count cp delete and remove move and so on right so uh, the second option is hdfs dfs and also command yeah so they do exactly the same right so it's a matter of uh, taste which uh, to use either HDFS DFS or Hadoop FS so personally myself prefer to use this Hadoop FS right okay so uh, just to look around let's use a command LS and from root let's see what we have there okay so as you can see we have five folders in the root yeah so uh, also an option recursive is available yeah? uh, just like for Linux so basically now we will see all files which is uh, which are in HDFS right okay uh, to make a folder uh, let's use mkdir sorry fs mkdir uh, in the root let's create it data guru dot guide okay so we don't have uh, permissions uh, to write in the root folder that's quite 
uh, quite good for security reasons. Okay, let's write to our home directory, Cloudera. Okay, so it retrieves it as a file, I believe. Okay, let's do that. Hmm. Once again. Ah, yeah, we should uh, use user Cloudera. Exactly. Exactly, it should be user. User Cloudera, yeah. Yeah, so if we just look at our home folder on HDFS, then we should be able to see our newly created data guru folder. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay, to remove it, we should use RM, right? Uh, just like we had in Linux. Let's have a look. Okay, RM, uh, so uh, recursive and also force, uh, that means that if we try to remove a folder from HDFS which uh, is not empty, that is it contains some files, uh, uh, HDFS will not allow to do that. So let's, let's just, just test it, so uh, let's create uh, some file in this uh, folder, so touch Z, uh, similar to touch, test file, okay. Okay, and now if we look recursively what we have in Cloudera folder, then we should see yeah, that we have our folder and here we have a file here as well, right? Okay, so if we now try to remove that folder, let's use the syntax as well. User, sorry, Cloudera, data guru. Let's see what happens. Yeah, right, so we can't actually uh, remove it without saying that we should remove it force. So otherwise, uh, folders, sorry, Okay, Let, let's let's do it like that. Hmm. Okay. Okay, yeah, so we remove that and so the point is that uh, we can't just uh, remove a directory if it is not empty just by issuing uh, a remove command. So we should either use a force with a recursive remove or we should uh, use a remove dir. Yeah, but as you can see here is an option to ignore fail on non-empty, so that means that uh, this command anyway will not allow you to uh, remove a folder which is not empty, right? So to remove a folder which is not empty from HDFS you should use this R and F uh, options, right? Okay, so that's related to console, and as promised, uh, we should also 
be able to use HDFS using Q. Right, so here from menu we select files, browsers, files, and here we go. Yeah, so basically that's a graphical interface. Yeah, and uh, one thing to compare, just just uh, take a look. Okay. Okay, and here to the root. Uh, so six folders here, six here. Right. So as you can see, um, so here we have the same uh, permissions uh, related uh, permissions related things, just like a console. Yeah. Uh, but Uh, but in my opinion, uh, console is a bit uh, more uh, efficient uh, to work with uh, HDFS. Uh, so, for example, here we are, uh, right? So, for example, for example, if we want uh, to do some actions related to to HDFS. So as you can see, we can navigate yeah, to one uh, folder to another and so on. So we have some options uh, to upload some files from local system to HDFS and vice versa. We can create a new file and folder and that's basically all what you can do here. right? But as you see, we have quite many options to, uh, to do with HDFS. Yeah, and all of them are available only from console. Yeah, and let's uh, let's have a look actually how we can copy some data from local file system to uh, to uh, to HDFS and uh, from HDFS to back to local system. So when we copy data from local file system to HDFS that means that this file will also not only be splitted and uh, saved to different servers each piece but it will also be replicated right so by default replication factor is free so it means that each piece of this file will be replicated three times and for if for some reasons uh, one of the servers uh, data nodes is down so we still may have uh, two replicas available so we should be able to retrieve our file and in opposite if we store that in a local file system if for some reasons our local file system is not operating good we can lose our file forever right okay so let's see uh, let's create a, a test file empty test file right okay here it is and let's move it to uh, uh, HDFS by using option put so we specify what we put and then we specify where we put it uh, so basically we put test file to our HDFS folder uh, user Cloudera right so let's see if this file is now there Okay, yeah, we can see it. And one thing to remember about HDFS is actually that all files which are written in HDFS, they are immutable. So that means that uh, files cannot be edited anyhow. Yeah, so if uh, we want to edit uh, this file, so actually Hue allows us to do that, but what actually is done under the hood, it actually deletes uh, original file and saves uh, our content in a new file with the same name right so what you should remember all files saved uh, in HDFS are immutable okay so uh, we can look at the content of the file using uh, known cut command okay so it's empty. OK, 
Okay, let's create a new file. Let's add some uh, some content to it. Save and move to HDFS using our uh, known command. HDFS put user go there. Okay. Ah, sorry, I forgot to mention which file we actually want to to save. Okay, so the first option is what we save and the second option where we save. Yeah, and if we look once again at our HDFS folder, we should now have two files there. So one test file is empty, as the site indicates, and another one is our new test2 file with some content so if we just use cut once again test2 then we should see our line yes exactly okay uh, let's now copy some files from HDFS to our local system right um, Okay, let's 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 remove this test to file. Yes. Okay. So as you see now, we don't have it, and let's uh, pull this file back to, from uh, file system uh, Hadoop uh, file system back to our local system. So it means get command is used. Then we specify what we get. Loadera test to and where we get. So we just want to get it here. Okay. okay, as you see now we have this test 2 and if we check the content, it's what we actually wanted. Yeah. Okay, now that, let's remove these uh, two files. User, load error, editing. Okay, so as you see, these files are moved to trash folder, so still if for some reasons we accidentally deleted something, we can still restore them. Yeah, so there is a special, special folder, as you can see, in our home folder called that .trash, from where we can uh, retrieve these files. Right, and if we check now whether we have something in Cloudera folder, then we shouldn't actually have anything. Let's see. Okay, only trash. Okay, so that's fine. So that's uh, actually all for the part related to Cloudera. Let's save it. And let's now quickly have a look at uh, Hortonworks related things. Uh, so, as a reminder, Hortonworks VM is not, is not so user friendly in terms of uh, graphical interface. So, we will use a SSH client to SSH to it. Uh, so, there is no Hue, of course, also available in Hortonworks. Okay, so let's launch our Hortonworks. And let's do some uh, basic things uh, from there as well. Okay, Kitty and HTTP. Okay, so probably will not be able to SSH right now because the sandbox is still not up. Let's wait a bit. <coughs> and also one thing to remember or to pay attention to 
that uh, depending on which virtualization software you are using the SSH port uh, could be different right okay uh, okay now it's running okay what was the password yes okay okay and also Hadoop FS right okay the same the same commands of course available so HDFS DFS will also work as well of course okay so let's let's look around see what we have in a root uh, folder on HDFS of course the structure is a bit different on Hortonworks right so we don't see any uh, Caldera user for example most probably let's see if we have it or not we shouldn't okay we don't have it but uh, we have as you see home folders for some uh, service users like Uzi, Hive and so on okay uh, let's 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 try to create a new folder somewhere smkdir user oh yeah we have uh, we have root so let's create the folder under it oh it's not judo but anyway okay so let's ls and see if we have it now we should okay excellent we have let's let's create a local file here okay vi test file test file content content let's save it and let's upload it to our newly created folder user root data gudu <laughs> okay okay let's check if it's there or not let's look at it recursively yeah we have it here let's check the content fast cat yeah. okay uh, now let's let's delete it uh, including our folder uh, so we should delete file and also corresponding folder yeah, okay let's do that by writing this one user root and we delete everything under the root including folders subfolders files and so on okay so as you see we moved this folder to the trash including everything that is there yeah, so we can just actually save uh, check check the content of our trash so because from uh, HDFS point of view it's uh, just a usual folder uh, which is uh, periodically uh, being emptied right okay so you see this file is here uh, the content of it, it should be still available so basically we can still work with it if we need for some reasons um, but yeah what we should remember is that at some point of time this uh, trash folder will be emptied uh, so that's a configurable parameter uh, whether at what point of time uh, how frequently this trash folder is being emptied right okay so that's all about HDFS in general uh, so next time we'll talk about HDFS in more details we will uh, look at how we can uh, somehow uh, adjust uh, 
how HDFS works, for example, how we can uh, see what is the current replication factor uh, set in our cluster, how we can uh, change it, right? So mostly we'll talk about console, how we can do from there. Uh, yeah, so we'll look at options available both in Cloudera and Hortonworks VM. Right, uh, we'll see how we can uh, using console discover the overall structure of our HDFS and HD and nodes related to HDFS, meaning data nodes and um, name node. Yeah. Okay, so as a reminder, in a couple of uh, days, a post will be available in our blog, blog.dataguru.guide, where you can read in more details some theory related to HDFS, how it operates and so on. Okay, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, yeah, some likes and comments will be also appreciated. If you haven't still seen our previous videos, that's the right time to do that. And otherwise, thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye-bye.